Hello folks. Well, for this one I want to go through the material for prepping for the final exam, what's going to be on it, um, how's it going to be distributed, how are you going to return it, uh, what kind of question styles, all that kind of thing. So we'll uh, run through all of this over the next few minutes. Let's see, what have we got? So at the bottom of the page of video links and whatnot, you'll find the um, four sections of information about the final exam. So that's pretty much what I'm going to run through today in the video. So we've got our usual exam page. So it's got the changes at the top, kind of summarizing how we've changed things to deal with the current situation and a bunch of practice material down at the bottom. But I'll come back and talk about that a little later on. So essentially what we're interested in is um, how are you going to do the exam? What's going to be on it? and how can you prep for it. So in terms of what's going to be the process for this, if you follow that first link, it's got a copy of the front page of the exam, well, minus what the actual questions are. But um, on here, there's information about how to get it, how to distribute it. And I'll actually replace that link with the actual exam page um, the morning that the exam is released. So. You will actually, if you want to, follow that same link and actually get the final exam. So three ways you'll be able to get the final exam. Um, at 8 a.m. on Monday the 20th, the day our exam was originally scheduled for, um, I'll release a Git repository called Final Exam that's got a copy of the final exam in it. I'll post it on VIU Learn, and I'll post it on this web page. So under my courses, the exams, there's the final exam 2020.html. Again, this link will take you to uh, to the actual exam. So those are the three ways you can get it. You'll have 24 hours to complete and return it. So as long as I get it back by 8 a.m. Pacific time on the 21st, we should be good. Um, you can either submit it by Git, you know, again, if you pull it that way, just if you do use Git, please make sure that you actually do your final add, commit, and push. Um, you can submit it through VIU Learn, or you can submit it by email to me at David Wessels or david.wessels at viu.ca as a PDF attachment. Do make sure that it's PDF because so many other things, either you know, people use proprietary software that I don't have any way to open or people send things that turn out to be absolutely massive and so they get blocked by you know, one of the servers somewhere in the email chain and so it never even reaches me or it gets trapped as spam in a spam filter somewhere. So I would use email as a last resort if you can't get either VIU Learn or the, the Git working. But um, again, any of those three are acceptable. Uh, after the deadline has passed, so after 8 a.m. on the 21st, I'll go through the list of exams that I've received in all three different formats, and I will try and contact anybody that I have not received a final exam from. So I'll fire an email to whatever our email address on file is for your uh, um, with your VIU registration. So um, the questions will be posted. You'll have those three mechanisms to get the exam and get it back to me within 24 hours. Uh, during that time, I'll make sure that I'm available for uh, kind of a five-hour slot that surrounds where we would have usually had the final exam. So I think it was scheduled from 1 to 4 on the, the 20th. So from noon until 5, I'll be on Discord, and I'll be checking email. Um, so Or you can contact me by my office phone number. It's forwarded to my cell. So with any of those three, you should be able to contact me. I will... Uh, make sure that I post any relevant questions um, on the announcements page. If it's something really crucial, maybe I'll send out a, a mass email to everybody, ah, you know, just a, a heads up about question, whatever. So I can't guarantee I'll be available outside that five hour window, but at least during that five hour block, you, you're guaranteed if you've got questions about the exam, you can get them to me. So I'd kind of advise you get the exam in the morning if you're able. Uh, have a look through it, see if you've got questions, fire them to me, I'll answer them. You know, you've still got the, the rest of the day and, um, you know, until the, the morning of the 21st to get it answered and get it submitted. Again, do make sure that you're submitting by PDF. 
but we should be good to go there. Uh, make sure that your name is in there someplace. Uh, most of the time I can figure out if it's VIU Learn or if it's Git, I can figure out who it came from. Um, usually from email I can figure out who it came from, but some people have some pretty unpredictable email addresses, so if you, uh, um, if you are submitting it that way, make sure your name's in there someplace so I can figure out whose exam it actually is. Uh, the exam format is going to be eight questions, ten marks each, do them all. Um, obviously, since this is a take-home exam, it's open book, you've got the internet accessible. It is still meant to be strictly individual. Uh, no getting assistance from other people, no talking the questions over with anybody but me, um, you know, no consultations, no outside help, uh, the usual drill. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the mechanics of the exam. In terms of the topic areas, uh, the usual short version of that answer is it could be anything from the lectures, the labs, or uh, the project, but obviously there's some things that are more likely to wind up being on there. So where we left off with the midterm, we had done kind of some theory level questions and material on let over lambda and closures and that kind of thing, and that's more or less where we left off. <clears throat> so I would expect there could be a question or two dealing with Lisp and functional programming covering either the actual coding aspects of let over lambda or covering macros, which were pretty much done after the midterm. So from the, the Lisp side of things, that can crop up. The other way that Lisp is likely to crop up is where exam questions start doing comparisons, you know, comparing how things were done in Lisp with how they were done in C or C++, things along those lines. So certainly questions like those can crop up. Don't, uh, don't brush off your, uh, your Lisp material. Then we got into the formal description of languages. So using regular expressions and context-free grammars, and particularly using Lex and Yak, which obviously we've harped on a lot as far as the project goes. So I would certainly expect some, you know, a question or two along those lines. Um, you know, maybe actual, because this is sort of take home and you've got all of the resources available to you and you've got your labs and stuff available to you and you're, you've got your project code available to you, it's entirely likely that there will be some questions actually writing Lex and Yak code in there. And the idea for this exam is it's still expected to be a three hour exam. Um, eight questions, so you're looking at whatever, 22, 20 odd minutes um, per question. So they can't be huge, but there can definitely be some coding material in there. Um, and then obviously we got into discussions of the features of different languages and looking at the ways that, that, that those features could be implemented, the implications that has for the programmer so we did look over, um, back before we uh, switched delivery modes, the idea of static versus dynamic binding, naming of things, scopes, typing, all kinds of issues along that. We, uh, we got into uh, static versus dynamic binding. We started looking at the primitive data types, the operators, uh, type compatibility, type casting, conversion. Right. We, we went into, um, in the beginning of the, uh, video material, we got into looking at some of the composite data types and operators, and obviously the order doesn't match the uh, the original plan here, but <clears throat> most of this we got into in a, uh, a trimmed down way. Um, actually, that's a, well, I mentioned it, for some of this material, we got into less detail this year than we would have in most terms just from the, the two lost weeks that we had, but most of these topics are at least touched on. In, uh, in our material, right? Obviously, expressions, precedence, associativity, I would expect a question along those lines, a uh, question on data types, a question on blocks and scope and branching and loops and that kind of thing. Uh, right? We got into the implementation side of things. We got into multiple entry and exit points and all sorts of different options there. Uh, we got into discussions of subroutines, functions, calls, returns, the different parameter passing methods, you know, higher order functions, variadic functions, and again, doing comparisons of sort of C, C++, Lisp, 
the different ways you might do things like this. So I would certainly expect questions along those lines as well. And nested declarations, um, overloading of functions. We got into discussions of pointer data types and all of the fun that goes along with that, contrasting pointers with references, looking at uh, dynamic memory allocation and how that works with pointers, looking at garbage collection, um, looking at smart pointers, and then getting into the OO area. And this is one of the areas where it got trimmed down a lot for, for this year in some of the past exam or some of the past terms we've spent uh, uh, more time looking deeper into the OO implementations. But certainly we got into discussions of how inheritance and how dynamic dispatch can work and can be made to work in an OO language at sort of the assembly language level, if you want to think of it that way. So I would certainly go through each of those. Again, obviously, as it's a take-home exam, you're going to have time to do a little bit of research once you actually see the questions. But these are the areas that I would expect to, uh, to have questions in. I guess it's uh, you want to make sure that you're comfortable with all of those different topics, and particularly that you're comfortable with the lab material surrounding all of these different things prior to actually attempting the exam. So we've got the, uh, the idea for the content itself, um, just in terms of questions. So this is off the, the bottom of the, our regular old exams page. We've got links to old midterms and old final exams. As you're going through these and trying to get ready for things, do keep in mind that you know all of these were in-class exams. Um, not take-home exams. So the questions are going to have a different look and feel. right? For a take-home exam, I'm not likely to ask you, you know, give me the definition of a blah, because obviously then you can just go to your notes, copy out the answer, and you're done. But um, what I would expect is that the questions you're going to be given are more um, analysis-type questions, compare and contrast, or questions where I actually get you to do something, where I tell you, you know, in, in Lisp they do this this way, um, how would you do the comparable thing in C or in C++ or the other direction around? You know, they do it like this in C++, how do you think something like that would work in Lisp? Questions where I actually expect you to try and figure out how things would work. Um, obviously for these things there's often no one specific right answer it's your justification for what you're thinking that's really interesting. Making sure that you convey to me that you thought through what the issues are, that you understand what's relevant, and that you can explain it reasonably well. So do keep in mind the different question styles as you're going through these things. But certainly if you're uh, looking at old exams, um, you know, where you see questions like this, where it says do blah for Lisp and again for C++, where it's kind of an applied exercise. I would certainly expect questions along those lines. Um, again, uh, provide a Lisp, Lisp example of doing something the way it's done in C++, right? Those kinds of ideas are certainly likely to crop up. Um, discussing key differences between things, uh, compare and contrast things. Questions like that will crop up, but I'll usually try and phrase them in a way that doesn't involve simply cutting and pasting um, answers directly from the, the notes that I've given you, right? It's got to be um, ways that involve some interpretation on your own part, some way for you to show me that you understand what's going on. If, uh, if what I get as an answer to something is just a cut and paste blurb from my notes or that's clearly come from some other set of notes online, it's probably not going to be worth as much as discussion that actually comes from you. So do keep that in mind as you're going through the questions. Um, when you're going through the old exams, do keep in mind that, again, we've Done th we've covered topics in a different order this semester than in some years past, and we've covered them to a different level of detail than in the past. Uh, we spent more time on Lex and, Lack, Lex and Yak this year than we do many years, um, but we spent less time on the OO side of things. 
some years we got into discussions of exception handling as parts of programming languages. We didn't really get in there this year. Um, some years we spent more time going back over the uh, the details of the runtime stack that we kind of glossed over this year and kind of treated it as well. This is stuff that you had to understand from your assembly language course, so we didn't rehash it too much in the course itself here. So um, when you're going through old exam questions, if there's something that looks completely alien to things that we've actually discussed this year, or it looks like it's in way more detail than we discussed this year, it's entirely possible that that's the case, that that was one of the topics that we either trimmed or expanded on for this year's course. So don't panic if you're going through old exams and something looks completely weird and alien. Um, if you dig up any of the exams prior to 2016, you'll find that there were huge chunks on logic programming and prologue that we've pretty much trimmed out of the course now. So again, that stuff is, uh, is not relevant for this year's final. So I think those are the key things I would like you to think about, to look at. Um, what I might do over the, the next couple of days is post some actual uh, practice discussion and you know, exam writing questions. So, um, you know, I'll pull up a question from one of these exams and just uh, do a short video of, you know, how would I go about answering this question? So I'll see if I can post a couple of those over the, the next week or so to help you get ready for things. Um, obviously, I'll still be on Discord if you've got questions. I'll still be answering email. And I'll please, uh, please contact me if you've got questions about anything. And we'll see how we go. All right, I will leave it there.